Thank you, Bobby. Man, if I got some stories, I could tell on this guy. <laughs> but, you know, three minutes is hard to do all he's done and tell you a little bit about it. But uh, this is Griff's day, and I'm just glad to be a part of it. But I got to give you a little background on our relationship so you know where I'm coming from on some of this. Uh, our paths first crossed 48 years ago. I got the, a calculator out to confirm that. But uh, 48 years ago, we took our first road trip of many in 48 years, Blacksburg, Virginia. We were uh, both out of Louisville, Kentucky High School, highly recruited players too. We both signed scholarships before we even saw the school. <laughs> but uh, uh, we were two out of 85 freshmen the eager to start their college football career. And four years later, there was only 14 of those guys left. So we got close. Two of those guys are over there now. Uh, Mike Saunders and Tommy Stafford came a long way to be here today. I know uh, Griff appreciates it. But uh, you learn a lot about a guy when you're hitchhiking 500 miles and you ain't got a, a ride by dark. You know you're stuck. And we did that several times. But uh, we were roommates. We married roommates, and that's another story in itself. <laughs> but the true story is that Stella and Donna jumped in the car with Griff and some other guys from Virginia Tech down there at Daytona. <laughs> now, they, they might have a different story, but that was it. I wasn't there, but uh, <laughs> our daughters were roommates, and uh, our sons, I heard, closed down the hospitality room last night, so family <laughs> traditions in good hands. <laughs> But uh, I played with him, I played against him, I coached with him, I coached against him, and it's a whole lot more fun when he's on your side. You even, you even want him on your team, even in golf. But uh, as a player, Griff played five years at Virginia Tech, one year red shirt. He started 31 straight games, including the 66 Liberty Bowl, and made all conference. And a great honor for any player, his senior season he was voted uh, co-captain after the season was over by his teammates. Uh, <clears throat> after graduation, he spent two years in the military, one in Vietnam. He was a member of the Big Red One Infantry Division and received Army Commendation Medal with V for Valor, received a Bronze Star, received a National Defense Award. He got out of Vietnam, he, got, he came back to Georgia and started coaching, uh, began a 33-year career uh, at uh, Northside Warner Robins as an assistant. He was at Northside for three years. <laughs> His uh, first head job was at Appling County in Baxley, Georgia. Stayed there five years. Went to Moultrie to Colquitt County for three years. And then he's, most of his career, 18 years at Effingham County. He went back to Appling for four more years and played in the Dome his first year back. Then uh, after 33 years of coaching, he spent three years at Georgia Tech as a high school relations. And uh, I think he's still involved with Georgia Tech doing a little PR work around the state for him. But Griff loved the challenge, he loved to build, and he loved changing attitudes. He didn't, uh, he'd, he'd rather take a program and build it from nothing and do it right than to take over one that's already built. Playoffs in Baxley and Springfield were unheard of, it never happened, but they became an annual affair. And uh, I'm gonna read uh, <clears throat> part of a letter from uh, one of his ex-players who's here today, I'll introduce him in a minute, but I was in the sixth grade when Coach Griffin and staff decided to leave a very successful 4A program in one of the most competitive regions of high school football and bring their system to Effingham County. After years of futility and countless one and nine and two and eight seasons, a decision was made to either invest in a program make it competitive or cease playing football altogether. Fortunately for me and my future teammates, the superintendent and the Board of Education decided to invest and sold Coach Griffith and his staff on the opportunity to create a successful program at Effingham County. I can't begin to imagine what Coach thought upon arrival. We had no junior high feeder program, no weight room, no functioning booster club, and the stadium was composed of cinder blocks and warped planks. In short, we didn't have a program and had no clue how to get one. 
Coach's staff addressed every obstacle systematically. He spoke to Booster, shared with him his vision of how a strong program would be a source of pride for our county. He reinvigorated the Booster Club, who raised the funds to refurbish the stadium playing field, oversaw construction, equipped a basic, well-equipped weight room. He worked to develop a feeder program at the junior high, and some more of his players arrived to teammates with fundamentals intact. But more importantly than anything else, he installed a brand of football, a system that was transformative for those who chose to be a part of it. Six years later, they were playing for a state championship. A final principle that I would like to highlight is that Coach and his staff believe that ultimately it was a privilege to play the game of football and that the players should both enjoy the game and honor it. In an age where many confuse the privilege of playing football with being a privileged football player, this is a principle too frequently forgotten. Bob's career highlights 219 wins, 111 losses, one tie. That's 67% over a 30-year period as a head coach. Six region championships, one state runner-up, head coach of Georgia, Florida, assistant coach of Georgia, Florida. Assistant coach of North-South game twice. He's been GACA president, been a member of the board. He's been the Georgia Athletic Director's uh, president and board member. Been a GHSA executive committee member. Received the GACA Sam Burke Award. Numerous Coach of the Year awards, state and regional. And he's been inducted into the Effingham County Hall of Fame. But one of the highest honors uh, that anybody could receive is former players from uh, Effingham County created a scholarship in his name at Georgia Tech. I'll read a little bit about this. But uh, to honor the impact that Coach Griff has made on numerous former players he has coached in the state of Georgia, we have established the Coach Bob Griffith Scholarship with Georgia Tech Athletic Association. Each year, one of the 85 football athletes at Georgia Tech will receive the Coach Bob Griffith Scholarship. The scholarship has been endowed on behalf of all former Effingham High School players in honor of Coach Griffith and will, begin, will be given to Coach Griffith from the members of that group collectively. A gift to establish an endowed scholarship provides current income to fund a scholarship each year and permanently memorializes the donor of any individual in whose honor the scholarship is named. A gift is used to establish a permanent endowment and the funds are invested. Interest on the endowment is used each year to provide financial aid to the student athlete qualifying for the scholarship. The original gift remains in the program forever. Too many notes. Well, the former players, Coach Griff's former players are here. I know where y'all stand. And uh, several here, and Carl Dasher. Uh, Terry, we got to create an award for the guy that came the farthest, but Carl Dasher is the leader of the Bob Griffith Scholarship, and he flew here from Singapore to be here today. <laughs> Griff's got some uh, former coaches that he coached with, we, with his, all his coaches, Stan, that are here. Anybody that coached with him? And last but not least, would all of his family and his entourage please stand? <laughs> Thank you. Coach Bob Griffith, a true Hall of Famer, please come forward. 